Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the conclusion of our retreat. We are grateful, O Lord, for the great things you have done in every one of our lives. And we are praying that your blessings that have started already will remain permanent in our lives in Jesus' name. We are praying, O Lord, as we listen to your word now, we will be attentive and we will be patient to take in everything you are giving unto us in Jesus' name. We pray that you make us obedient to your word, even at home, everywhere we may find ourselves, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. As you look at the program, you will see that we are considering an important message concerning the church. Already because now the Lord has touched your life, you have been redeemed, the Lord has made you part of his own church. As you look at the program, you will see that we are considering an important message concerning the church. Now the Lord has touched your life, you have been redeemed, the Lord has made you part of his own church. When the New Testament uh, uses the word church, there are actually two concepts we talk about when we mention church in the New Testament. There is the universal church, invisible church. All the people that know the Lord in all denominations, they are referred to as the church as well. You find in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 23. It says to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are reaching in heaven to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect that is the assembly of all people who are born again the church of the firstborn not only this church here not only the church in your locality all the people that are born again whether in this country or in any other country and in whatever denomination they are the church of the firstborn but there is the local church and the new testament also uses the word church in that way in matthew chapter 18 matthew chapter 18 verse 17 and if he shall neglect to hear them tell it unto the church but if he neglect to hear the church let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican that now is talking about the local church and he tells you if somebody has done something that you didn't appreciate tell him if he doesn't accept his fault tell two or three others and if he doesn't agree with all that you are saying tell it in your local church now we're looking at pillars and caterpillars in Christ's church. As we think about the church in general, there are some people we can refer to as pillars in the church in general. You see, for example, in the early church, Paul the apostle will refer to you as a pillar, not just in a local church, and he'll be referred to not just as a pillar in the church in Corinth or the church at Rome or the church in Philippi or the church in Thessalonica all those churches at that time will recognize Paul as a pillar in the church as you think of Peter for example you think of John you think of James and uh, they will be pillars at that time not just in a single local church in the church universal at that time everywhere you call church they recognize them as pillars in the church then when you think of the caterpillars the caterpillars are the destructive ones they are like the canker worm they are like the locusts they are the caterpillars destroying the church as well and there are some people at that time too you could refer to as caterpillars in the general church universal church for example there were those who went about and they were telling the people that they must be circumcised according to the law of moses and they were subverting the souls of many people in different localities they will be caterpillars in the general church so when you talk of pillars and caterpillars it may be referring it may be referring to the general church not just the church in nigeria the church in africa but the church everywhere for example you have known you have heard from uh, news 
uh, when a particular big, big evangelist known all over the world, when he fell and did something wrong, and many, many people were discouraged. His backsliding, his fall, did not only affect a local church, it affected many churches, caterpillars in the church. But now we're going to consider the local church. And we're going to look at pillars in the local church and caterpillars in the local church. For you to understand what the Bible is referring to as pillar, look at Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16. And in verse 26, Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me, permit me, allow me, that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. The pillars whereupon the house standeth. You build on that pillar, and the pillar is carrying a lot of weight, a lot of load, supporting the house. And it says that I may even lean upon them. Pillars are those uh, people that carry a lot of weight, lot of responsibility, they are dependable, and they support the temple of the living God, they support the church, they, they supply, they give encouragement to everybody in that church. In Joel chapter 1, Joel chapter 1. We now want to see those that are referred to as the caterpillars. In Joel chapter 1 verse 4, that which the palmer worm has left as the locust eating, and that which the locust has left as the canker worm uh, eating, and that which the canker worm has left as the caterpillar eating. The caterpillars were at the worms, at the insects, at the termites that destroy the plants. I am the vine and you are the branches. And we who are branches in the vine were supposed to be bearing fruit. But when canker worm, locusts, and a caterpillar, when they besiege a particular plant, a particular tree, they will eat up the fruit. And therefore they will make the branches to be fruitless. The caterpillars, therefore, are the people that destroy the life of the church. And those are what we are going to examine today. And you will check up as you look at the references of the Bible whether you are a pillar and we can rest upon you. And you are supportive and you are dependable or you are a caterpillar. You are one of those people sapping the life of the church, destroying the life of the church, destroying the standard of the word of God in the church. And if you happen to be a pillar, in the third point, I will challenge you to remain and become more steadfast in the Lord. If you have been a caterpillar, today you are going to change. You will remove that kata out of your name, not kata kata, you understand? And then you become a pillar. Why will you remove kata kata from you? Then you become a pillar, you become steadfast in the Lord in Jesus' name. Number one, dependable soldiers in Christ. Those are the pillars. Number two, destructive strangers in the church. Those are the caterpillars. Number three, divine standard for the church. Number one, dependable soldiers in Christ. Actually, as many have become born again, you need to understand, you are now soldiers of the cross. And the Lord wants you to be a pillar. He wants you to be dependable. He wants you to be supportive. He wants you to be a person that is standing firm and new converts can lean upon you as a pillar. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Now therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Those are the pillars in the church. They endure. They are born again. Persecution may come. They endure. Temptation may come. They endure. Other people may misunderstand them. They endure. Whatever may happen to them. They endure. 
Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You are warring against the flesh. You are warring against the devil. You are battling against all the things that are coming to you from the world. No man that warreth like that against the flesh, against sin, against temptation, will entangle himself with the affairs of this life. And only in that way can you be a dependable person, somebody we can lean upon, somebody we can trust, and you become a pillar in the church of the living God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, look at these believers here and see the testimony that Paul gave about them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and of our Father. These are people upon which you can build some confidence and trust. You notice three things about them in that verse. Work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope. And the apostle tells us now there are three things, faith, hope, and love. And these people, they add everything, the work of faith, the labor of love, the patience of hope, in the sight of the Lord, in the sight of the Father as well. If you want to prove, if you want to demonstrate that you are a pillar in the church, you have faith in the Lord, no matter what circumstance you are in, no matter what is happening, you put your faith in the Lord, no matter who you are relating with, there will be love in your interaction with people, and no matter how hopeless the condition, you put your hope in the Lord. In verse 6, and you became followers of us and of the Lord. These are dependable people. They saw the example and the pattern of life of the apostles and they became followers of the apostles. They will not look sideways. They will not look anywhere. They put the face on the Lord Jesus Christ. They became followers of the Lord and followers of the followers of the Lord. In verse 7, so that he were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. You, you see these Christians, they even became good examples. Good example in their conversation. Good example in their prayer life. Good example in evangelism. Good example in their addressing. All the newcomers can look at them and see the thing that ought to be done. They saw them as good examples. In verse 8, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. Do you see those are the pillars? They were involved also in evangelism. They kept the faith. They demonstrated love. They remained in hope. They were followers of the Lord. They were followers of the apostles. They were good examples to younger Christians coming behind them. They were sounding first the gospel of the Lord. Not only in one city, Macedonia. Not in only in the province of Macedonia or Achaia. But all over everywhere, the face of these people was being broadcasted. And even when the apostles got to the place or to the different places they went, before they got there, these uh, Thessalonian believers, they were there before them. And they were pre preaching the word of God. And evangelism was going on. And Paul said, what I wanted to preach, I didn't need to preach it at all. These people had got there. We didn't need to speak anything anymore. They are pillars in the church. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 3 For their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Hey, do you see these other ones again now? Paul the apostle was saying about this one, he said, this one, there was willingness within them. You don't have to push them. You don't have to drag them. You don't have to be pleading with them. You don't have to force them. You don't have to be begging them to get involved in the work of God of themselves. Voluntarily, they were willing. Praying us, pleading with us with much entreaty. 
that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. You see, these people, they were not just uh, uh, saying that we we'll work for God. They were so willing. They were so devoted. They were so consecrated. Even when the leaders were saying, that's enough. You have done enough. You are doing too much. They were pleading, let me serve God. They were pleading, let me worship God. They were pleading, let me give everything I have. They were pleading, I have only one life. I want to spend the life for the Lord. Even though you think I'm giving much, I want to give more. Those are pillars in the church. Verse 5, and this they did, not as we hoped. But first they gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And there were some people in those days, they felt that Paul the Apostle was uh, too firm, was too demanding, was too difficult, was too hard. And uh, they said, well, his demand is too much, his preaching is too much, we can't endure this. But you see these ones that are pillars in the church, Paul the Apostle said, in fact, we were surprised. Because as the others were saying that this is too hard, as the others were saying that the demand is too great, these people, they surprised us. Because they went beyond what we expected. That's why he said in verse 5, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first they gave themselves to the Lord. And then as they gave themselves to the Lord, they gave themselves unto us by the will of God. Those are the pillars in the church. I pray God will make you a pillar. A dependable soldier of Christ. A person that has genuine experience of salvation. A person who is not idle, but you have the work of faith, you have the labor of love, you have the patience of hope. God will make you a pillar. Somebody others can lean upon, others can trust, others can have confidence in you in the church. Somebody who is following the Lord step by step and following the example of the leadership in the church. Somebody who is a good example to young converts that have just been born again. A good example in the language of your mouth. A good example in the places you go and the places you don't go. A good example in your family life. A good example in your dressing. And then a good example in evangelizing, preaching the gospel to others. A good example in consecration, that people can tell it about you, you have given of yourself to the Lord, and you have given yourself to the church to say, I am a property of the Lord, I am a child of God, my time, my treasure, my money, my life, my skill, everything belongs to the Lord, God will make you a pillar. Unfortunately at that time, not everybody was a pillar. There were caterpillars at that time. That leads us to number two. Destructive strangers in the church. Let me remind you again. As we talk about caterpillars. See what the Bible is referring to. In Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Verse 34 and verse 35. He speak. And the locusts came, and caterpillars, and that without number, and did eat up all the herbs in their land, and devoured the fruit of their ground. The caterpillars were those termites and insects, like locusts and canker worm, that came and ate up all the fruit, and destroyed all the tree. And yet we are talking about people. And these people are referred to as caterpillars. Because you see these caterpillars, they behave, they are men, but they behave like those insects that eat up the good fruit of the labor of the Lord in the church. Jeremiah chapter 51. For you to understand that there are men that are likened unto caterpillars. Jeremiah 51 verse 14. The Lord of hosts have sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. 
You see, these were men, but the Lord referred to them as caterpillars because of the destructive work they will do. As there are pillars in the church, there are caterpillars in the church. What are the characteristics of those caterpillars? As we examine these things, so we'll measure your life with what we're reading. Numbers chapter 11 and in verse 4. Numbers 11 verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them, among the people of God, they fell and lost him. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? The murmuring started from the mixed multitude. They started among the people that came out of the land of Egypt with the people of Israel. They had their sin, they had heard a lot of things that God did for the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel, when they were going, they said, well, we'd like to go with them. The, the conversion was not thorough. The conversion was not genuine. They were the mixed multitude that just mixed up with the children of Israel. They caused problem in the wilderness for them. In verse 5, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely and the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. The caterpillars are the people that are always remembering the world. They are always remembering the drinking and the dancing and the smoking and the pleasures and the loss of the flesh. And they say, well, uh, is it the way we are going to continue? Holiness and holiness every time. Sound doctrine every time. And when they begin to complain, even the people of God, the children of Israel, they pick up the complaint. And they too begin to complain. And they bring destruction into the church of the living God. In verse 10, then Moses had the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly, and Moses also was displeased. If you are one of those bringing discouragement to the hearts of the children of God, and you're always complaining, I don't like this, I don't like that, see the way they are treating us, uh, see this one, we we'll remember when we were in the Catholic church, we we'll remember when we were in the Anglican church, I remember even when I was in Sele, I remember when we were in the other places, see this deeper life we have come to now, if you are one of a mixed multitude, always say we remember Egypt, we remember Egypt, and you are bringing discouragement to the hearts of the people of God, you are a caterpillar in the church. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 18, Philippians chapter 3 verse 18, for many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction whose God is their belly, and who glory in their shame, who mind as lessons. You see these people, they were bringing even tears, sorrow, sadness in the heart of the leader, in the heart of the apostle. Every time he remembered them and remembered their negative influence on other members of the church, he said they walk. As I've told you, and they are walking in the flesh, and he says, as I'm telling you now, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, I'm weeping because of them. Their God is their belly. They are only for material things. They glory in their shame. And they will speak some things that should make somebody feel ashamed, they will glory in it. They will dress in such a shameful manner a woman that has been coming to deeper life for five years, for ten years, and when she dresses, pardon me to say it clearly, you will see the breast outside, and when she uh, sits down, the dress will not cover the knee, and the thing will be so tight, bringing temptation to the men around her, and uh, if you correct her, she says, uh, what's wrong in it? It doesn't matter. Are you the one that will teach me? I've been coming to this church now, which retreat have not I attended. I've been here for more than five years, and we're looking at you we are crying because not only that you don't enter into the kingdom of God, the people that want to enter, you will not allow them to enter. 
the glory in their shame and their mind as lessons. They don't care. They want to destroy the church because of uh, give us church building. If we don't have church building, we're going to scatter the church. Permit us to watch television. If there is no television, we're leaving. We're going. Just because of ordinary television. What are you arguing about? Because of television. Are you going to carry television to heaven? And who is disturbing you? If you want to be watching television and you want to see, be seeing all those immoral bad pictures and you want to pollute your life, that's your business. And now you want it, introduce it to the church. Give television to the old church. If you don't change that doctrine, if you don't change that, we're going. We cannot stay. They mind as lessons. They want us to pollute the church. They want us to destroy the church. You are caterpillars in the church. And some of them to even to to confuse many people they go about they say even i can tell you that pastor be polite i know that he himself every night is watching television let him come out boldly let him tell us also and release us to watch television because he himself we know he is watching television have you been in the pastor's house have you are you the policeman inspector have you come to inspect the pastor's house you are a liar all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone no sir caterpillars they are not bringing encouragement to the church they are not bringing upliftment to the church they are not upholding the standard of the word of god they just go about confusing people wanting people to backslide and they want to eat up the fruit of the labor of the people of god you, you should be a pillar see all that we're doing see all our labor see everybody laboring do you want to rise up and scatter all these good good people this uh, nice uh, fellowship you will not scatter you will well, gather in Jesus' name. In First Timothy chapter five, First Timothy chapter five, verse twelve, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Those are the caterpillars they cast off their first faith. And in verse 13, and with that, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busy bodies speaking things which they ought not. In verse 15, for some are already turned aside after Satan. You see, those are the people, they are caterpillars. They are for destruction. But you will not destroy. I said you will not destroy. That kata, kata, behind your name, God will remove it this morning. You will become a pillar. You know, we need to build together. Isn't it wonderful as we are one here? In which other place can you find a fellowship like this? With the word of God clearly taught from day to day. And we're doing everything to encourage you and to build you up. And we labor night and day so that you will get to heaven. We have not offended you. We have not hurt you. We have not done anything that will uh, make you weak. All that we are laboring day after day is to lift you up, bring you near the cross, and bring you near the Lord, and make you holy, and make you righteous, so that on that day when the trumpet shall sound, I will be there, you will be there, none of us will be missing in Jesus' name. We shall all be pillars in the church. Encouraging one another in the church. Building up one another in the church. If we're going to build up the church, we're going to follow divine standard. That leads us to point number three, divine standard for the church. Divine standard for the church. In Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 28. Proverbs 22 verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. You see, when you came in, you saw the distinctives of Christian teaching in the church. Don't remove it. And you see, all these years, the wind has been blowing. All the new ministries and new fellowships and new churches, uh, they change this and change that. You see, by the grace of God, we have been standing before we came. As you come in, help us. Like Aaron and all, they held the hand of Moses to hold him up. I pray you will help us in Jesus' name. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Proverbs 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. 
Have you got the truth since you came to this place? Since you've been coming to deeper life, have you got the truth? Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Proverbs 24, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. Fear the Lord, fear the King. There are some people that are rising up today and they are telling us not to respect our pastor and not to fear the king and not to show any respect, any honor and they say everybody is the same. Uh, what pastor is that? Is he not brother so and so? In fact, uh, I can go and talk to him now. There should be some respect. There should be some distance. I'm your father in the Lord. Fear the Lord. Fear the king. And it says in the latter part of verse 21, Meddle not with them that are given to change. Don't have anything to do with those people that are just changing here and there, like chameleons. The word of God stands firm, remain firm with the word of God. In Jude verse 3, Jude verse 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints that's the word the lord has given us earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints all the word of the lord he has given us we will not lose anyone until he comes Although many people in other churches, denominations may be unfaithful, our commitment and consecration here is to be faithful to the totality of the word of God. Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, listening to verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always unto even unto the end of the world and everybody said amen, amen. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you is that possible to teach all things that the lord has commit com commanded us not to deviate to the right, not to deviate to the left. Is it possible to remain in this narrow path and keep on teaching the same thing? Even though it's not popular, many people are it. Yes, it is possible. God's grace is sufficient for us. But why don't we change a little? Why don't we remove some little, little things? Why don't we modify the teachings and the doctrines a little? Revelation chapter 22 from verse 18 and verse 19 and I for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book it's because of those two verses of scripture i've read to you that we're impressing it upon you every time don't let the caterpillars that are coming to you destroy your life don't let them convince you to remove anything from the word of god and then your name is taken out of the book of life and if your name is out of the book of life what joy will i have if i get to heaven i will be looking for you if i don't see you see all the time i'm giving to you see everything that i'm doing it's because i want to get you i want to see you in heaven and when i get there i'll be looking for you please let me find you there. when you get there will you look for me what if I go to America and then I change the standard? I travel all these people that are inviting me, come, come, and I go there and then they convince me, and then I change, and my name is not in the book of life again, and then you get there, and I helped you to get there, and you look for me and you don't find me, will you enjoy that? Let's encourage one another to be there. You know, all these troubles will soon be over. All the temptation will soon be over. 
All this praying and praying and fasting will soon be over. The tears and the sorrow will soon be over. Then we'll be taken away from this place. Then we'll be over there. And Satan will not trouble us again. Sickness will not trouble us again. And my only joy, I don't know Peter face to face, or John, or someone in the Bible. It's you I know. When I get there, I know I will see Paul. I know I will see Peter. I know I will see John. But I, I don't know them. You are the one I know. When I get there, I want to see you there. I'll be looking for you. If I don't see you there, I don't know whether I will enjoy heaven. If you don't see me there, how will you enjoy that heaven? Rise up, we're going to that place. We will be there. We will be there. We will be there. We're going to be there together. Be a pillar in the church. Don't be a caterpillar. Be a pillar in the church. Let's support one another. Let's help one another. Let's encourage one another. Let us love one another. Let us help one another. Encourage me, I need encouragement. I am encouraging you every time. I am praying for you every time. I love you every time. I need your encouragement too. Let us encourage one another so we can be in that place. Be a pillar in the church of the living God. Don't destroy. Don't destroy. Don't make people to backslide. Let's move on together. We'll be there. We'll be there. It may not be long. It may not take too many months. It may not take too many years. Let me find you when we get there. You'll find me there when you get there too. Christ and his church. He 
Jesus showed me love and broke my shame. Then the grace of God unlocks the gates of hell. Free at last. Are you free at last? 